Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about books. Whilst I don't do my big roundups every month, I still want to do a sort of monthly roundup where I go through some key stats and pick out my favourite book and my least favourite book of the month. As it is February, this is exactly what I am going to do today. So in February, I read 10 books. However, two of these were DNFs, so technically I read eight, but two DNFs. As for genres, I read one mystery, one thriller, two romance, and six fantasies. My total pages read was 5,091, which is an average total page count per book of 509 pages. This made my average page count per day 181 pages. Six of the books were written by authors I have read before, and four of them were written by authors I hadn't read before. There was one reread, which of course was House of Earth and Blood, as we prepped for the House of Sky and Breath release. And my average star rating was four, which is incredibly high for me. I'm usually sitting around three and a half and again heavily weighted by the fact that I read two books which I knew I loved which were House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. As for the actual books that I read this month I've got my list here so I'm just going to go through them now. They were The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, Fire with Fire by Destiny Soraya, The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. Girl A by Abigail Dean, which was my first DNF, Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman, Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, which was my second DNF, and Breath of Fire by Amanda Boucher. Now I am going to jump into my worst book of the month, which was The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. The Gilded Ones follows Dika, who lives in constant fear of a blood ceremony in which the people in her village take blood from all the women who have come of age, and they test it essentially to see if it flows red, aka the colour of purity, or gold, the colour of impurity. Dika, of course, her blood flows gold, so she is imprisoned by the people in her village, until one day a mysterious woman saves her and gives her this opportunity of a lifetime to come and use her skills and abilities to come and fight for the kingdom. But as Dika journeys to the capital, she realizes that not everything is as it seems and these beings that she is being sent to fight are not necessarily the bad guys that everybody is trying to brainwash the kingdom into believing that they are. As you'll remember from my five book reading update, if you've uh, watched that, this book was just filled to the brim with cliche. It just killed me and it really made me wish that I had DNF'd it well before the beginning, but the plot kept me coming back despite the fact that the writing style felt very immature. It was also incredibly confusing because the writing style and the conversations between the different characters, like I said, were immature, but the actual content and the descriptions of battle scenes were quite gory. There was a lot of description of like very brutal scenes. So I just, I felt it felt so disconnected. The plot was also confusing and felt like it had a few holes as some of the characters were actively encouraging the death and destruction and massacre of a particular type of creature, despite the fact that their overall goal was to save this creature. There were certain aspects of the story that were very predictable and then the last thing was just the naivety, I think, was just paramount in this book. The belief that it, these people who had been raised to think this one way their entire life would somehow be convinced after one speech from like a 15 year old girl. It was just completely far-fetched. It was incredibly naive and I gave this book one star because I just, I couldn't believe it. It just, it wasn't possible. And lastly, we have my best book of the month, which is going to be no surprise to absolutely anyone. That, of course, would be House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, which came out on the 15th of February, and of course I picked it up immediately. House of Sky and Breath is the second book in the Crescent City series, following on from the events of House of Earth and Blood, in which Bryce, a half-human, half-fey woman, is sent to investigate a series of deaths, mysterious deaths that are taking place in Crescent City. To help her with this and to protect her while she accomplishes this sort of mission is Hunt Athala, who is every girl's dream in my mind. As the two of them investigate these murders, they uncover a completely deep and dark underbelly in Crescent City and a power dynamic that really needs to be changed, which is of course where 
House of Sky and Breath comes in and it just it just expands insanely from there. I'm not going to go into too much detail about my thoughts on the book because I did do a reading vlog on this but I gave it five stars. I will link the reading vlog. Please do give that a watch. I have put timestamps in that so that you can jump straight to House of, Earth and, House of Sky and Breath sorry, and my thoughts. But I will say that the last sentence blew my mind. Those are the books that I read in February. My favourite, my least favourite. Let me know in the comments down below what you read in February, if you read any of these books. I assume a fair number of people read House of Sky and Breath. And let me know what you thought of any of the books that I read, if you've read them as well, if you love them, if you hated them, all that stuff. As always, like, subscribe down below and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I release new content and I will see you in my next video. Bye!